Enhancing image generation models using photogenic needles in Haystack is a paper released by Meta to generate highly aesthetic images. It achieves this by introducing a fine tuning technique called quality tuning, which goes on to show that as little as 2000 high quality images is all that you need to achieve the objective and hence the paper title photogenic needles in a haystack. In this video, let's look at the model architecture and the process to collate the high quality data set in order to train the EMU model. And lastly, some of the mind blowing results achieved by EMU. Before we get started, I would like to give a quick shout out about our X account where we share daily updates on research papers, news and happenings from top AI labs from all around the world. Let's start with the approach. EMO is trained in two stages, namely the pre-training and quality fine tuning. Though this may be a well-known recipe, the main message from this paper is that it all comes down to quality rather than quantity. So the authors have not only curated such a quality fine tuning data set, but shown that such a fine tuning does not compromise on the generality of the model as measured by metrics like faithfulness. The first contribution of the paper is the modifications to the latent diffusion model architecture. And in that first comes the auto encoder, which has the encoder and the decoder parts. The auto encoders typically use four channels for their intermediate layers thereby compressing the data and restricting their ability to represent fine details. So in this work, the authors have increased the number of layers in the intermediate channel from four to eight and from eight to 16. And in order to increase the input channels further, they do a Fourier feature transform to lift the input channel dimensions of RGB image from three to even higher dimensions. And with these modifications, they tested the reconstruction of images and evaluated on reconstruction scores such as FID and peak signal to noise ratio. We can notice that as the channels increase, these metrics show an improvement. Even visually, the quality of the images seem to get far better as the number of channels increase. The next modification to the architecture is that of the unit used for denoising. In order to increase the capacity of the unit, they increase the channel size and the number of stacked residual blocks in each stage. And lastly, they modify the decoder to output images at a resolution of 1024 by 1024. With those architectural changes, they start with the first stage of training, which is pre-training. Now pre-training obviously needs a massive data set. And so they pre-train with a 1.1 billion images data set. But the point to note here is that they employ progressive training by gradually increasing the resolution of the images. This seems to help the model learn fine details in the images slowly but steadily. The other thing is the introduction of noise offset in the final stages of pre-training. It was showed in this block which states that by simply modifying the noise with a small offset enables stable diffusion to generate very dark or light images easily. The offset can be introduced with just one line of code modification in say PyTorch, where we just add a small offset of say 0.1, in this case, the noise generation process. Now after pre-training with these tweaks, next comes the fine tuning stage, which is stage two. And the pre-trained model 
thus obtained is now subject to quality tuning. But for this, we need the quality data set in the first place. So how do we curate such a quality data set for quality tuning? For this, the authors of the paper employ a two-stage filtering process, namely automatic filtering and manual filtering. In automatic filtering, they use automatic filters to reduce the pool of millions of images down to a few hundred. So some of the considerations is the number of words in the image using a word count filter to eliminate images with too much overlay text on them or say using a clip score filter to eliminate images with poor image text alignment. Now with these standard pre-processing filters, they reduce the images to a smaller data set. Obviously they have other filters like image size and aspect ratio, reducing the final data set size to 200,000. In the next step of manual or human filtering, humans manually assess the images for aesthetic appeal. For example, this image satisfies the rule of thirds in photography and hence it is aesthetically appealing. Similarly, this portrait is quite appealing compared to a standard image because the background is all blurred, creating what is called a bokeh in photography. So it's much more aesthetically appealing compared to a selfie taken, say, on a mobile phone. The human filtering step resulted in 2000 images and they then composed captions for those 2000 images, which were then used for training the EMO model. Because there are just 2000 samples, they fine tuned for only 15,000 iterations with early stopping in place in order to avoid overfitting. For evaluation, they were mainly concerned about two metrics, namely the visual appeal and faithfulness. They have ditched the FID scores as many recent papers argue that FID scores do not correlate well with human assessment of the performance of generative models. So what is visual appeal? Visual appeal is subjective and so the generated images were shown to five annotators, usually with the generated images from two models shown side by side, and the annotators chose which one of the images is more appealing. For example, if we are comparing the pre-trained model with the quality tuned model, then these two images are shown to the annotators without the prompt and the annotators are asked to choose which one of the two images is visually appealing. Moving on to text faithfulness, it refers to the degree of similarity between a generated image and a text caption. Again, the annotators were asked to ignore the visual appeal of the images, but were asked to choose which one of the best describes the captions between two choices A and B, or is it both? In this case, they were shown both the image and the captions so that they can choose which image reflects the captions in a better way. Lastly, the paper shows that quality tuning is not just restricted to the latent diffusion models, but applicable to other models like pixel diffusion and mass generative transformers. As seen from this figure, quality tuning when applied to these models also improves the visual aesthetics of these models. Lastly, as with any generative model, they say that their model could be subject to safety and fairness issues, leading to generation of bias, misleading and offensive outputs but this is all just a possibility. In my opinion, this paper is a clear eye-opener to show how small the fine-tuning dataset can be to tune LLMs or VLMs to achieve results that are actually what we need for a given domain. There are a couple of extensions of this paper 
namely EMU Edit and EMU Video. Let's review, review those papers in the upcoming videos. But until then, I'm signing off and I will see you in my next. Take care.